Hey everyone, welcome back to Sarah. Oh, hi. <laughs> Boogie says hi to you. You gotta hop down, buddy. I know. I know. Shh, shh, shh. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sarah Joy Says. We're in the middle of a series right now where we're talking about being a professional performer, those hard topics that nobody wants to talk about, such as performing for free, how to get paid, how to deal ethically with other artists, you know, the good stuff. On a few popular forums, I've seen a lot of questions lately about being paid as an artist. I know that we've had some discussions recently in the community about what is fair pay and when you should and shouldn't be paid. In my last video, I talked about free events and what types of events were appropriate for free events. Be sure to check that out. I know a lot of artists really want to start sharing their art and it's even better when they're offered pay. The question is, how much should you be getting paid? This is a question that I think we go round and round as a community about, and a lot of people don't necessarily share what they are paid. I think that this is a detriment to the community. We definitely need to be sharing our numbers, especially in close proximity to each other. We need to make sure that the pay is fair and that we are working to bring value to our art form. We're gonna talk about this involving a couple of different situations. I'd like to talk about the payment issue from a couple of different viewpoints. I am a professional belly dancer. I dance at restaurants. I'm also hired out for private gigs like weddings, corporate events, birthday parties, and the like. I have different rate sets for each of these. I'm also a show producer. I produce shows both big and small. I have shows that have a very large budget and I have shows that have a very small budget. So let's start talking about getting paid as a solo artist. First, you have to find out if this is a gig that fits you before you decide to go ahead and take the gig. When I'm dancing as a solo artist at a restaurant, I make sure that I negotiate my rate beforehand. I find out how many sets that I have to do, if a costume change is expected, if props are expected, what type of music they're looking for, and how any tips will be handled. Find out what the expectations are from the restaurant owner about how you are going to be treated by the patrons. Second, you need to do research around your area to find out what other restaurants are paying. With a restaurant gig, typically you will have two to three sets in the evening. I do three 10 to 15 minute sets or two 10 to 15 minute sets. Most people don't pay attention longer than this. Some restaurants may want you to dance longer. Some restaurants may have a live band for you to dance to. That is all gonna be part of the negotiation. What I do is I break down my rate to a per set rate. My restaurant rates are a little cheaper than my private gig rates. And I do this because I am going to be working at that restaurant for long periods of time and my potential for making tips is a lot higher. I also wanna make sure that the restaurant that I'm working with is going to support tipping and going to encourage their patrons to do that. After all, this is how we make part of our living. We are worth tipping. Once I figure out how many sets I'm doing, if I'm doing costume changes, and if I'm doing props, then I figure out my overall formula of how much I want to get paid per set, and then overall. I keep those consistent between restaurants. I feel that this is very important. Again, I know that a lot of places are seeing a dip in the amount of money that dancers are getting per restaurant. A lot of this has been attributed to new dancers coming in and not understanding that $25 is not enough to dance at a restaurant. It is not enough to do one set. Come on, value yourself more. If you have questions about that, please let me know. I would be glad to walk you through this personally. You've gotten a restaurant gig. Maybe you want to add something else or restaurants aren't your thing. There are other gig options that are paid as well, such as weddings, corporate gigs, and private parties. Now, I have a couple of rules when it comes to private parties. I do not 
as a general rule, do all male parties, no bachelor parties. If I get a bad vibe about a party, I will turn it down. I am very choosy about the gigs that I do go on and I always bring another person with me. Being concerned about your safety is really important. We'll talk about that in another video. I also will not go out on a last minute party without doubling my rates because as you see, it's a lot to do this face, right? When I'm contacted about a private gig, I'm contacted a couple of different ways. Either I'm contacted by a family or a person that I already know, I'm contacted via my website, I'm contacted via Instagram, Facebook, or other social media, or I am contracted through a third party like Gig Salad, Gig Masters, or a talent agency. When I make official contact with the client, I like to go ahead and see what it is that they are looking for. Are they looking for a James Bond style belly dancer? Maybe they're looking for a nerdy style belly dancer. I have had that happen. Maybe they are really looking for another style dancer, like a line dancer. And for some reason, they didn't figure out that a belly dancer is not a line dancer. It happens and that's okay. Once I know that they are intending to hire a belly dancer and I know what ideas they have about a belly dancer, I talk to them about what they're looking for from the performance. A lot of folks will start out and tell you they want a 30 minute set. In this day and age, very few people actually want a belly dancer to dance for 30 minutes. It's just not a thing. Our attention spans aren't that long. So a lot of times I'll get gigs who ask me to dance for an hour, for half an hour, and I send them a message back that politely states, certainly I understand, I would love to do that. I find that most audiences are only entertained for about two to three songs. Once we can agree on length of time, I check in about costuming, if there are any special costuming requests. Generally, if it's a birthday or a wedding, I try to match the color of my costume to the theme. I also check in about any props, if they would like me to bring my sword or perhaps a fire tray. Very importantly, I check in about the sound system. What kind of sound system is gonna be there? Do they need to bring you a sound system? Do you need to bring a sound system? I find that this is overlooked a lot of times and that you can show up and there's nowhere to play your music. I also always bring a small speaker with me. Never hurts. Once all of these details are finalized, then I go ahead and quote my price. I always make sure to get a contract and a down payment. I take payment through PayPal or via credit card. This ensures that even if the client cancels on me, I at least get half of my rate. This protects me from being stood up and having wasted my time that day. Another way that you can get payment as an artist who is operating solo is to dance in shows. Now there are a lot of shows that are not paid, even big ticket shows. It is really important for you as an artist to go ahead and ask this up front. When I am dancing in a show that is not one that I am producing, I establish how I'm going to get paid up front. This could be a portion of a door split. This could be a payment that is done per set. This could also be based on ticket sales. And you'll see I made a little face with that. I'm not sure how I feel about that one. That's not one that I personally have encountered, although I've definitely talked to other dancers who have. It's really important to know this up front because then you know what to expect. If you're going into a show that is just a door split, then you know that the audience size is going to dictate your paycheck size. If you're going into a show that is based on set prices, then you can budget accordingly. I have found that some producers get really defensive when you ask them this. That to me is a red flag. It's probably not a show that you want to work with. And it's okay, you don't have to take every opportunity that comes your way. You'll actually find if you're picky with your opportunities, you get the better opportunities. Let's talk about this from the perspective of a producer. I produce my own shows as brown coat belly dance. I have a pool of approximately 20 performers that I can pull at any time to create a show. It is very important to me that these performers are compensated. Each show has a different budget. It depends on what I've negotiated with the venue or the event beforehand. Some shows, especially in smaller venues, are door splits. I let my performers know that beforehand. 
Sometimes I'm able to guarantee a minimum per set and sometimes I'm not. With the larger events, I negotiate a budget before going in. I take into account how many acts I want to have in a show. I multiply that by the set amount that I want to pay my performers per their performance piece. I also factor in a 10% rate for the group. What I use this for is I use this for promotion of our event and for graphic design. Graphic design tends to eat quite a bit of your budget and if you don't factor it in, it'll get you. Once I figured out that rate, I am able to submit my number to the event. Then they decide if they would like to hire us. There's certainly many events that we have not gotten hired for, and those events tend to go with performers who offer their performances for free. That is certainly their choice. However, this does hurt the community. A lot of these events would be willing to pay for performances if they thought they were valuable. By offering your performances for free, you're showing that your art is not as valued. I know that that is really harsh and that is going to upset some folks. Unfortunately, it is the truth. By continuing to offer your artwork for free at paid events, you are telling those producers that your art is not as valuable as other art. You are valuable. Your art is valuable. If you don't feel like you're as good as the performers who are up there, that's okay. Why do you have to do this now? You can go work hard and do it later. It's fine. There's nothing saying that you have to perform right away. There's nothing saying that you have to put yourself in a paid performance situation, but you have to offer your performance for free because it's not up to par. You can wait, it's okay. I also create my own shows and produce them in larger venues. When I do these, I create an upfront budget for myself so that I know what kind of ticket sales I am looking at to try to pull off this show. I try to be really realistic with what's going to happen. You are probably not going to sell out your event the first time. I'm really careful on my budgeting. I make sure that I am not dependent on just ticket sales. Sometimes this means that I take money in from sponsors or we take donations. I also ask for anything that I can get for free to give to my VIPs or whatnot. I do the same thing with these shows that I do when budgeting for larger shows. I set a rate per piece, then I calculate any of my incidentals, like my graphic design, my advertising. With this, it's gonna be my venue rental. If there's seat rental, if you're buying food, trust me, there's so many hidden costs to this. And then I calculate in my rate for my group, which is 10%. A lot of times I don't make that. I will add in a side note, it is important as a producer to pay yourself. I am finally getting better at this, but for a long time I would take no cuts so that my dancers could have funds. I also still offer the opportunity for individuals to tip us. I feel that it's important that if they are really satisfied with the show that they've seen, they have the opportunity to give us a little extra. If we make over the performer salaries and tips, then I split the rest of them between the performers. That money was given specifically for the performers and should be used thusly. That's my opinion there. I know that that was a lot of information on paying performers. We covered being paid as a solo artist and we covered paying as a producer. I have a lot more information on this that I would really love to share with you. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I am opening up my mentorship program soon and we'll have details on my Facebook page about that. I will also maybe drop a video on here on YouTube. Let's see. If you would like to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and of course, YouTube. I am so excited to get to share this information with you all. I would love if you have appreciated this video for you to give it a like and please subscribe to my channel. I'll be bringing you another video on this topic next month. If you have anything that you would like me to talk about, please drop me a line and let me know. Until then, thank you all so much. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time.